begin. Uh, let me ask you, what do you think is the population of Kazakhstan? Now, do not take out your phones. Thank You'll find out in the end what the population of Kazakhstan is. I just want you to think. Maybe it's a little too vague, so maybe you know I'll give you a little hint. Do you think it is less than two million people, or is it more than two million? Just keep that in mind. Do not check what the population is. We'll get to that later. Now today I'm here to talk to you about economics. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> now before you start, you know, uh, falling asleep and uh, throwing paper balls at me, <laughs> I'm going to talk about how economics, economics is actually a really, really cool thing. I'm going to talk about behavioral economics today, something that I'm very passionate about, something that is very intriguing, something that is extremely interesting. Right? Okay. So behavioral economics, it is essentially the study of the psychology behind economic decision making, right? So the thought that you put into making decisions, that is behavioral economics. It is best, it is very, very best. So I'm not going to get into details, and I'm going to limit this to topics that are relevant, topics that all of you can relate to, topics that make you realize that the assumption that we make at the beginning of every chapter of economics that the individual is rational, the consumer is rational, is a load of bullshit. And how it does not, it does not work in real life, right? All right, so let me present to you the full collection of 2008, right? Just notice the hemlines here, the lens of the skirts of the women, of the models, right? Now notice this is 2008, end 2008. Now let me take you back to the 20s. Right? This is the early 20s, all right? Stock prices were high, the market was looming, yeah? And at that, notice the headlines here too. At that time, what these women are wearing here, we considered scandalous, yes? Let's get to 1929, Black Tuesday. Now these were the headlines of 1929 and the 1930s. Look at the headlines, they're, they're longer, don't you? Do, do you notice the difference? You do. All right. Next, we have 1950s. Yes. Then came Marilyn Monroe. Look at the headline there. Man. And also, <laughs> exactly right. Uh, yeah. Stop it. Notice the 1950s was a period of economic boom. Next, we have the 70s. The market slumped. The economy between 1971 and 1974 wasn't doing very well. The stock market prices. At the lowest of the time. So, do you notice a blatant pattern here? <laughs> this is called the hemline index. So, to gauge the condition of the economy of the market, you don't really have to go check out the news anymore. You just have to check out our legs. And you'll know how the market is doing, how the economy is doing. So, it is uh, empirically proven that empirical studies have shown or evidence has shown that when the market is doing well, our stands of our business tend to get shorter. But when, our, when the economy is not doing very, very well, if it's gloomy, they get longer. Notice the pattern here, and you'll find out for yourself. All right, so that was one of the theories that really intrigued me, that really, uh, I did a lot of research on this last year, spent about a month researching on this. This was actually founded in 1926, after the Great Depression in 1929. Uh, the next thing I'm going to talk to you about and convince you that economics is actually cool is uh, something that is known as sunk cost fallacy. Anybody who's heard of sunk cost fallacy here? All right. Uh, so how many times has it happened that you know you bought a movie ticket or like you know a ticket to a the to theater or a play uh -huh. or something you really wanted to go, but on the day itself, you, you fall sick. Or like, you know, an hour before you get a booty call or something, and you know you don't want to go. Oh. But you paid money, right? You paid money, and that's sunk. It's gone, it's sunk cost, right? But you want your money's worth. So you decide, you know what, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get my money's worth, I'm gonna sit for that play, and I'm gonna get my money back. You end up going, you don't enjoy yourself, and you think, oh, I'd rather be somewhere else. And you're actually gaining disutility 
out of his head. I hope you guys are familiar with that, at least. Uh, you're not happy with the experience, is what I mean, right? So number one, you have the sunk cost, and you're just adding on to the cost. So what's the point? So this is for better decision making. So if you've lost money already in something, something that's gonna happen in the future sometime, and if you're not up to it later, don't go, because otherwise you'll just be adding up to the cost. This has really helped me in the last year or so. All right, coming back to Kazakhstan. Any guesses? 10.2 million. Give me a figure. 10.2 million. All right, anybody else? Less than or more than two million. Give me a figure. 1.2 million. 1.6. Any others? 5.3. 5 5.3. 5 3.4. 3.2. 3.2. Okay, fine. All right. This is for, sorry? More than 2 million. Give me a figure. 6. Okay. Now what I'm going to talk about next is the anchoring effect. Now what you didn't realize is that 2 million is actually an anchor, right? So you're going to base your views based on the anchor. Your views are going to depend on the anchor. So most of the answers are actually going to be between 2, 1, 4, 5, around there. And that happened because 2 million is your anchor. The actual population of Kazakhstan is 17.3 million. But you anchor your views based on 2 million. So that is some, that's, that's a food for thought. So economics is pretty cool. This is behavioral economics. This is what we wrote about last year. Stop rolling your eyes, probably. You know it's cool. <laughs> now, I urge you to go back, uh, read up on this. This is really, really fun. Read up on things like risk aversion or loss aversion. It will blow your mind. And it will make you realize how you think you're rational, how you think you're making good decisions today. You're not. You're making a fool out of yourself. Thank you.